counsel? Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Bernard, have you ever met somebody named Janet Arvizo? Yes, I have. And when did you first meet her? First time I met her was just passing by in the main house area. And you say, passing by. Now, what do you mean? I was going to the main house just to pick up something, and she was in the garage area, and it was just a hello kind of thing. This is the garage area of the main house? Correct. And is that attached to the main house? It's attached, yes. And what did you see her doing in the garage area of the main house? She was just standing outside. Okay, did she appear to be doing anything in particular? No. Was she talking to anyone, to your knowledge? No. Just standing there? Yes. In the garage area, what do you typically see? You would just see the garage doors and the entrance then to the opening to the main area where you can go to the pool area or the arcade room or the main door to the main house. And did you say hello to her? Back door, I mean. I'm sorry, what was that? Did you say hello to her at that time? Yes, I did. And that was the first time you had ever seen her? Yes. Did she say hello to you? Yes. Okay, but you saw her standing there not doing anything in particular? Yes. And what time do you think it was? It was mid-afternoon. I couldn't give you an approximate time. I don't actually recall. It was just afternoon. And you went into the main house after you saw Janet Arvizo? Correct. Were you just doing some work in the main house that day? I believe I was just picking up something real quick. Did you ever see her again that day? No. Okay, do you recall ever talking to Janet Arvizo on any telephone? Yes. And could you explain what you mean? She used to call up several different times to, while I was in the, in my office requesting different things. Okay, now. We're talking about sometime in February 2003, right? Correct. Okay, and did she start to call you after you met her in the garage area? Correct. Okay, and you introduced yourself by name to her? Correct. Did you tell her what your position was at Neverland? I didn't tell her what my position was. After we did introduce ourselves, she did ask what I did there, and then that's how she found out. She asked me and then I told her what I did. Sorry, did you finish? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry I interrupted. That's okay. After you met her in the garage area as you were on your way to the main house, she started to call you, is that correct? Object. Asked and answered. What was that? Just a moment. He's objecting. Oh. It's me. Overruled. You may answer. I'll have the question read back so you know. After you met her in the garage area as you were on your way to the main house, she started to call you, is that correct? Yes. Would she call you at your office in the administration building? Correct. Was that the only phone you had while you worked at Neverland? No, there was many phones, but for a direct number, because they were direct connect lines, she would call me directly. And do you know how she got your direct line number? Yes, there's main phone lists around Neverland. Every phone has a phone list as to which numbers connect you to which phone. And would the guest houses have that phone list? Yes. Okay, so it was not difficult to find out how to get a hold of you, correct? No. And is that phone list revised from time to time? All the time. And who typically revises the phone list? I do. And when you revise the phone list, what do you do? I would just go into the computer and revise it and make copies again, and send it to the whoever's in charge of the main house and they would make sure it got around. And the phone list would have numbers for virtually everyone who worked at Neverland, right? It would have, the phone list actually had, for every phone, like, the numbers. Like it would be number 21 for this phone would be whoever this phone, you know, it would connect you to. Okay. So every phone to Neverland. So it was no secret how to call people who worked at Neverland if you were on the ranch, right? Correct. Okay, and how many phone lists do you think there were around Neverland showing you where to call someone if you wanted to? 
There was at least approximately probably 20, if not more. Okay, and you were talking about phones in the theater and phones at the train station and phones all over, right? Correct. And you would redo the phone list, and you would arrange to have someone insert it in all the phones at Neverland, right? Correct. Do you recall approximately the first time Janet Arviso called you after you met her? If you're asking for a date, no. Approximately when? Would it be sometime in February of 2003, do you think? Yes, February of 2003. Okay, and what did you talk about? She had asked if I can get her. I'm going to object to the statements as hearsay. Sustained. Did you ever do anything for Janet in response to any request of hers? Yes, I took her off property. Where did you take her? To a day spa. And where was that day spa? It was located in Solvang. And why did you take Janet to a day spa? She wanted to get some different things waxed and wanted to also get her hair done up and different things done to her hair. Did she make that request to you? Yes, she did. Did she call you on the phone to make that request? Yes, she did. And when she asked you to take her to a spa to do the things you described, what did you do in response? I first told Joe about it, just to let him know that she's making this request, and to make sure if it was okay to set an appointment for, like that, and got the okay, and went ahead and set the appointment up. Okay, and did you choose any particular date for that appointment? She wanted it done right away. Okay. Within the hour. Okay, and Joe gave you the approval, right? Correct. You called the spa, right? Correct. How did you know which spa to call? I just tried to find one real close by. It was one I had never, I didn't even know we had one that close by, so I had looked at the phone book. Had anyone at Neverland ever made a request like that to you before? Never. And was it your understanding that you were supposed to make the appointment and take Janet to the appointment? I didn't know I was supposed to take her to the appointment. At some point in time. Did you actually learn you were going to take her to the appointment? Yes. Okay, how did you learn that? After I set up the appointment. What happened? I just got asked if I could take her. Okay, and who asked you that? Actually, at the time the main house, who was in charge of the main house, Jesus, asked me if I could take her. Okay, and did you take her? Yes, I did. Now. Did you transport her yourself? Yes, I did. Was anyone with you and Janet when you took her? No. And what car did you take her in? I took her in a van. And whose van was that? It was Mr. Jackson's, one of his vehicles. Okay, and so it was just you and Janet in the van, right? Correct. This is the appointment you had arranged, right? Correct. And approximately what time of day do you think you took Janet to her appointment? This was closer towards the evening. I want to say it was approximately around 4 o'clock-ish. I could, yeah. And when you took Janet to her appointment at the salon, did you have any understanding as to who was going to pay for it? We were. How did you know that? Because we always do with, with any request from any guests. We just pay, we do. We just pay for whatever the request might be. Did you ever discuss with Janet who was going to pay for the waxing treatment at the salon? No. Okay, was it your understanding that she just assumed you'd pay for it? Correct. Object, your honor, calls for a conclusion. Sustained. Move to strike. Stricken. Did you ever tell Janet, Mr. Jackson's going to pay for your appointment? No. So there was no discussion about payment at all? Never. Okay, and when you took her to the appointment at the salon, tell us what happened. As we were driving? Sure. As we were driving, again, I really didn't know Janet too well except for the few phone conversations and the requests that she had. We were driving along, and she started to tell me about. I'm going to object to anything she says as hearsay. Not for the truth, your honor. What relevance does it have, then? It impeaches. Just a moment. Well, that's just a basis. Let's not start. 
Relevance. Hearsay and relevance. The objection is overruled. You may answer. She started to talk about her ex husband and about how she was trying to get away from him. Going into detail about those type of how badly she had it, how well, you know, Michael had been treating her, how he was so much of a father figure to her kids, how he's helped them out so, you know, how he's helped them out. She just pretty much was praising Michael and telling me also just how, how bad she had it off with her ex. And I was just driving the whole, you know, the distance, because it's not too far from the salon to Neverland. And the whole time, though, I was thinking, I don't know this lady and I can't believe she's telling me this much into her background of her story, because I wouldn't normally tell anybody my kind of story. And. Object to the narrative, your honor. Sustained. How long was the drive to the salon? It would be about a 10 minute drive. Okay, and did you drop her off at the salon? I took her inside and talked to the front lady that I had talked to on the phone, and we talked about payment. And if I recall, I think I did pay then. And then, and then they told me, okay, it will be about this long. And I decided, I still had more work to do, so I said, I'll come back for her, and I left. And then after she had told me how long it would be, and I think it was maybe about 45 minutes she said to come back, and I came back. So after you dropped Janet Arviso at the salon, did you go back to Neverland? Yes, I did. Okay, and you resumed your duties at Neverland when you got back? Correct. Okay, and at some point you decided to return to the salon to pick Janet Arviso up, right? Correct. Now, while Janet Arviso was at the salon, did you speak to her at all on the phone? No. Did you speak to anyone at the salon while you were back at Neverland? No. Okay, so at some point you drive back to the salon to pick her up, right? Correct. And you get to the salon, and what do you do next? Go inside to get her, and then she wants to get her hair done. And I just talked with the lady at the, you know, the front desk lady. And we tried to arrange for her to get her hair done. And the person who was going to do her hair, she didn't have anything available until the next morning, so then we walked through the back, because I guess the hair place is just right through the back of their area. The salon's right in front. And we spoke to her, and she was going to make a special trip in for the next morning, and we set it up for the next morning, and we were going to bring Janet back the next morning to get her hair done. Okay, now, while you were driving Janet to the salon and while she was telling you about her personal life, did she ever complain that she was being held against her will at Neverland? Never. During that drive to the salon, did Janet Arviso ever say she and her family were being falsely imprisoned at Neverland? Never. During that drive to the salon, did she ever complain that Michael Jackson or anyone associated with him was doing anything bad to she or her family? Never. Were you ever part of any effort to hold Janet Arviso against her will? No, I was not. Were you ever part of any conspiracy to falsely imprison the Arviso family? No, I was not. Were you ever part of any conspiracy to extort or threaten anyone in the Arviso family? No, I was not. Did anyone at Neverland ever ask you to hold the Arvizos against their will? No, no one ever did. Anyone at Neverland ever ask you to extort the Arvizos or threaten them in any way? No. Okay, did you ever get the feeling, separate and apart from what she told you when you drove her to the salon, that she was being held captive? Never. Now, when you drove Janet Arviso to the salon, do you recall there being any public relations group following you with cameras? No. When you brought Janet Arviso into the salon, do you recall seeing any public relations crew following you? None whatsoever. Did you see anybody with cameras following you when you took Janet Arviso to the salon? No, I did not. When you went to pick up Janet Arviso, after she'd completed her appointment, did you go into the salon? After I had picked her up? No, excuse me, when you went, I didn't rephrase it. Excuse me, I didn't phrase it very well. Let me withdraw the question. When you returned to the salon to pick up Ms. Arviso, did you park the van? Yes, I did. And did you get out of it? Yes. Did you go into the salon? Yes, I did. 
What did you do when you got in the salon? That's when we went to the back area to try and schedule the appointment for her hair. Okay. Was Janet with you when you went into the back area? Yes. Was she with you when you tried to schedule another appointment? Yes. Did she ever complain that she was being held against her will at the salon? No. Okay. Did she ever complain that her children were being held against their will at any time? No. Okay. And because she wanted a hair appointment, you scheduled one, right? Correct. Okay. After you scheduled the hair appointment, what did you do next? We just drove back to Neverland. And you recall paying for the salon appointment, right? Yes. On the way back to Neverland, did you and Janet chat? I'm sure it was small chit chat. Was anyone else in the van with you? No, it was still, we were alone. On the way back, did she ever complain about anything Mr. Jackson had ever done? No. On the way back, did she ever complain about anything that was going on at Neverland? No. Now, you said that Janet called you from time to time at Neverland, right? Uh huh, yes. And on, obviously on one of the occasions she asked for the opportunity to go to the salon, right? Correct. Do you recall her calling and asking you other things? Yes. What else did she ask you to do? She has asked for us to take her off property to go shopping for clothes for her and her children. She's also asked me to set up an appointment with a dentist so she could get some braces removed from one of her sons. Okay, and did you set up that dental appointment? Actually, I believe Joe Marcus did. Okay, and when she asked you to set up a dental appointment, was there any discussion about who would pay for the appointment? No, there was not. Was it your assumption that Mr. Jackson would pay for it? Correct. Okay, and did you have anything to do with that dental appointment other than what you've just described? No, that was it. Okay, now, you said she called up and asked you to take she and her family out to buy clothes? Correct. And do you remember what she said? Just. Object. Hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, she said that she had lost her suitcases and didn't have any clothes at all, and needed to get some clothes. And at the time, Chris Carter was in the office when I was taking the call, and was standing there, and he said that he had just taken them to get clothes and some shoes, and he didn't understand why she was calling asking for those things. So you're understanding. I'm going to object to the second hearsay statement. It's stricken. The jury is admonished to disregard the statement by Chris Carter. Was it your understanding that this was not the first time she had called and made a request to go shopping for clothes? Yes. Did you arrange for Janet Arviso to go shopping for clothes? No. Why didn't you do that? Object. Immaterial. Sustained. How many phone calls do you think you had with Janet Arviso while she was at Neverland? Maybe four or five. In any of those conversations, did she ever complain that she was being held against her will? No, she did not. Did you ever get the impression in any of those conversations that Janet was scared of anything? Never once. Did you ever get the impression that she was trying to hide anything when she spoke to you on the phone? No. Were those phone calls all initiated by Janet or would you call her as well? No, they were initiated by Janet. And did you know where she was calling from when she made those calls? No, I don't have that capability of knowing where she's at. Okay, did Janet explain to you why she wanted a dental appointment? Yes. What did she say? I'm going to object. Excuse me, are you finished with the question? Yes. Object. Hearsay. State of mind, your honor. And not for the truth. The objection is overruled. You may answer. She stated that she was being hassled by the dentist who put the braces on, and couldn't afford to pay for them. And she wanted to send the braces back in an envelope to the dentist. And did you relay that information to Mr. Marcus? Yes, I did. Okay, did you ever see Mr. Jackson interact with Janet at Neverland? No, I did not. Did you ever see, excuse me, did you ever meet any of Miss Arviso's children at Neverland? Just passing by. Okay. Like how I did with her outside in the garage areas. 
And where was this? Also. At Neverland? Also, when I met them, it was also in the garage areas. Okay. When they were just standing around. Were the children with Janet or without Janet? One time they were with Janet. And then one time I believe they were just getting ready to get on some quads or something. Okay. Or go-karts. At the time you saw them with Janet, approximately what time of day was that? Again, in the afternoon. It could have been one, two, three o'clock. And approximately where at Neverland did you see Janet and her children together? In the front, in the main house area, in the pool, in the garage, pool area. So roughly where you had seen Janet the first time, correct? Correct. And what did she seem to be doing with her children? She was just standing around with them. She wasn't doing anything. What do you recall the children doing on that day? Nothing. On the day that she was with them? Yes. They were just standing around with her also at that time, at that moment. But there was no question in your mind they seemed to be together, right near, Janet seemed to be together with her children? Oh, yes. Near the main house, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So for how long did you observe them all on that particular day? It wasn't long at all. I was just passing by, so it was a few minutes. Now, were you going to the main house or away from the main residence? To the main residence. Okay. Did Janet introduce you to her children? No. Okay. You just said hello? Uh-huh. Okay. Have you ever spoken to any of her children, other than what you described on that day? No. All right. Did you ever see Janet inside the main house when you were helping out? I believe I saw her one time in the kitchen area, but that would be it. And what do you recall seeing her doing? Sitting at the kitchen bar. Okay. And the kitchen bar? Stool. Is like a counter where you can see into the kitchen, right? Correct. And that's a counter which has wooden seats attached to it, right? Correct. And you typically have plates with homemade buns on the counter every day, right? Correct. And people will sometimes order food and it will be prepared right in front of them in that kitchen area, correct? That's correct. And are you saying you remember seeing Janet sitting there? Yes. Okay. Did you see her eating anything? I don't recall. Was she talking to anyone, if you recall? I don't believe so. Were her children with her on that occasion? No. Okay. Any other time you remember seeing the Arviso children doing anything at Neverland? No. A lot of the times I was in the office working, so they were always running around playing. And you'd see them playing? No. We would just, I would know. We would know a lot of times if they had requests to take the quads out, because then we'd have to call security to pull them out or the mechanics to pull them out. So a lot of times I would just know when those kind of things, you know, if the kids were out running around on those. So part of your job would be to arrange for the children to drive the quads? Or just to let the security or somebody know to pull them out or put them away. And typically when this request was made, who would make the request? The kids would ask somebody around the house area, and then they would call one of us in the office. Just depends on whoever was around to ask, and then they would call us. And if you got a request to arrange for the children to drive quads, what would you do? Well, we always need the OK and the authorization from Joe, so he would be the one to go to next. And was any such request ever turned down, do you know? I don't believe so, no. OK, and how many times do you think you were involved in a request to provide quads for the Arviso children? Maybe just a couple times. Okay. Did you ever see them actually driving around? It's possible. Not sure? I'm not sure. A lot of times people wear helmets, you know, or we make sure everybody does wear helmets. So I couldn't tell you underneath the helmets who was who. Have you seen other children drive quads? Yes. Have you been involved in arranging for other children to drive quads? Yes. What do you have to do to make that arrangement? Just get the authorization through Joe, and then just make sure that they're available and working and ready. 
Would you then contact the children who wanted to drive quads and let them know that they were available? No. What would happen next as far as their being able to drive a quad? If I was involved with that actually, I would just let security know, and security would come and take over from there after I found out, or had the authorization. They would get them available and then find the kids or let them know where they are. And I don't know from then on what they did. Now, you said your work was mostly at the administration building up on a hill, right? Uh-huh. And the main house, when you helped out? Uh-huh. Right, and did you ever work at the theater? On events, yes. What events are you talking about? When, when I wasn't hosting events, and, say, if we had weekend events and they needed help, I would, like, working behind the theater, the snack bar. I would work inside the theater, like handing out candy or popcorn, those kind of things. Would you hand out candy and popcorn to children? Yes. Okay, they were children who were there for specific events? Yes. Do you recall seeing the Arviso kids in the theater? No, I don't believe so. I don't think I've ever, not for an event. Do you think you've seen the Arviso children anywhere else at Neverland during the time that you worked? No. No further questions, Your Honor. No questions. All right, thank you. You may step down. Call your next witness. Defense will call Ms. Maria Gomez. When you get to the witness stand, please remain standing. Face the clerk here. Raise your right hand. Yes. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Maria Gomez. Will you please spell that? The interpreter will spell M-A-R-I-A-G-O-M-E-Z. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Gomez. Miss Gomez, do you know the fellow seated at council table to my right? Yes. Who is he? He is my boss. I work for him. What is his name? Michael Jackson. And how long have you worked for Michael Jackson? I have worked for him ten and a half years. And have you worked for him at Neverland? Yes. And what kind of work have you done at Neverland? In English, the housekeeping. Okay, and as a housekeeper, what are your responsibilities? Cleaning. Cleaning the house. To serve. And is all of your work in the main house? No, in other areas as well. And what other areas do you work at? The units, the theater, the train depot. And when you say, the units, do you mean the guest units? Yes. And as part of your responsibilities, do you and others clean the guest units? Yes. Now, is there a particular time of day that you usually clean the guest units? Yes, we always clean them when the guests go out to lunch. So do you typically clean the guest units around midday? Yes. And when the guests go to lunch, where do they typically go? To the kitchen. And is that the kitchen in the main house? Yes. And so you will watch to see when the guests go to the main house and then go to clean the guest units? Usually, yes. And how long does it typically take to clean a guest unit while the guests are having lunch in the main house? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. About an hour. Okay, now, if the guests don't leave for lunch and stay in the unit, what do you do about cleaning the unit? We ask. We call them on the phone and ask if they would like service. So you try and schedule an appropriate time with the guest? Yes. Okay, now, in the main house, what areas do you typically clean? The whole house. Well, not his room. What areas, do you think? The upper floor of the house, the library. All the areas except for his room. Would you be responsible for cleaning the wine cellar area? Yes. And let me direct your attention to the year of 2003, okay? And I'd like to talk about January, February, March of 2003. Okay, were your duties the same as you've just described? Yes. And were you cleaning the wine cellar then? Yes. Were you cleaning the guest units then? Yes. Okay. Do you recall ever meeting someone named Janet Arviso? Yes. 
And when do you recall first meeting Janet Arvizo? I cannot recall. Do you recall seeing them in 2003? Yes. And do you recall seeing them in the time period of, say, January, February, March 2003, roughly? Yes. Okay. Did you ever see Janet Arvizo's children at Neverland? Yes. And what were their names, if you remember? Develin, Star and Gavin. And do you recall the Arvizo family staying at the ranch? Yes. Would you see them often? Yes, all the time. Did you see Janet Arvizo all the time? Yes. And where would you often see Janet Arvizo? Sometimes I saw her in her room, because I cleaned when she was inside the room. And other times, most of the time in the kitchen. What would you, excuse me, let me rephrase that. What did you see Janet Arvizo doing in the kitchen? Well, not exactly in the kitchen, but at the counter. And what would you see her doing at the counter? When she would go for meals, she would spend a lot of time there, because there was a machine where they can play games there. Did you see Janet with her children in that area of the house? Yes, many times. Would you see them all playing games? Yes. Was there a particular time of day where you would see them playing games in the kitchen area? Well, at lunchtime or mealtimes. Did you see Janet in the main house at other times? Yes. And how often do you remember seeing Janet in the main house at times other than lunch? Well, usually they would go and spend time there at the sitting room. And what is the sitting room? It's an area next to the kitchen. And what do you see in the sitting room? How is that? Well, is there a television in the sitting room? Yes. Is it a big television? Yes. And would you see Janet and the kids watching television in the sitting room? Yes. And you have couches near the TV, right? Yes. Would you see them there at all times of day? Many times they would spend a lot of hours there. Now, what hours did you work during the first three months of 2003? Well, we're always rotating. Usually my schedule, I would go at 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Then sometimes I would leave at 4.30. But when I had the afternoon shift, Actually I would stay until we locked up the house. And what time would you lock up the house when you did the afternoon shift? 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the evening. Did you sometimes see Janet Arvizo in the house in the evening? Yes. Would you see Janet with her children in the house in the evening? Yes, after supper. Did you see Janet and her children have dinner in the main house often? Yes, but at that time she spent a lot of time in her room. And would you visit her in her room? Only the times that I would go and clean when she could request it. Did you ever see Janet watching television in the main house in the evening? I cannot recall exactly, but it was normal to see them spend a lot of time in that area. And that's in the main house, right? Yes. Now, in Janet's guest quarters, did you have a television also? Yes. And did you see her children in the guest quarters ever? Yes. How many times do you think you saw Janet's children in the guest quarters at Neverland? I would not be able to say how many times. But when we would go and clean, they would be there for a short while and then they would go out and then come back in. Now, during the first three months of 2003, how many guest units do you remember the Arvizos having at Neverland? Three. And whose rooms, excuse me, let me rephrase that, who was staying in those three units? The lady in number four, Gavin in number three, and Star and Develin in number two. And did you often clean those three units? Sometimes I would do one or sometimes another, but not very often, not every day would I clean all three. Okay, do you recall seeing the children in their units from time to time? As I said, they came and went. Okay, do you recall cleaning the children's units? Yes. Did you do that often? Sometimes. And did those units need cleaning? Oh, yes. And what do you mean by that? Those children were tremendous. They usually would bring a lot of things from the theater, lots of candy. And they would make a big mess. Something, it was almost as if they would want to waste whatever. 
Was it hard cleaning their rooms? Yes. Why was that? They would leave them. Well, I don't think that guests staying for one night would make such a filthy mess in one day. Did they make a mess often? Yes. Was there any question? Excuse me, let me rephrase that. They clearly were using those rooms, weren't they? Objection. Calls for a conclusion. Ambiguous. Overruled. Yes. Now, you said you would clean Janet's room, right? Yes. Was her room a little easier to clean than the kids? It was easier, yes, of course. Okay, she didn't mess her room up the way those children did, right? No. Did the children mess up their beds? Oh, yes. And what do you mean by that? Well, when one, well, I don't know if they, if they were very wild when they slept, but the sheets and the blankets were, they were all, they had been taken out of the bed. Did that happen often? Many times. They would always make a mess. And the beds. Did you see Janet at any other locations on the property from time to time? Well, when she would spend a lot of time there in her room, I happened to mention to her why she didn't go out and take a walk. Because to me, it seemed that she spent a lot of time there. And that would be when sometimes, well, very few times. All object is non-responsive. Sustained. Did you ever see Michael Jackson with Janet Arvizo at Neverland? Yes. And what do you recall seeing Michael Jackson and Janet Arvizo doing? Talking or eating dinner. Would Michael Jackson eat dinner with Janet Arvizo? Not all the time, but sometimes. Would you see Michael Jackson and Janet having dinner without the children? But you are asking about those that time, January? January, February, March 2003, approximately. Oh, no. She spent a lot of time in her room. And did you see her with Michael Jackson at all? All object. Vague as to time. Sustained. During the approximate period of January, February, March of 2003, do you recall seeing Michael Jackson with Janet Arvizo at Neverland? I would not be able to say. I can't recall. Do you recall seeing Janet Arvizo with her children at Neverland outside of the main house? All object. Vague as to time. Yes. I'll rephrase it, Your Honor. During the approximate period of January, February and March of 2003, do you recall seeing Janet Arvizo with her children at Neverland outside of the house? Yes. And where did you see them? Around the units area. What did you see them doing? Just talking. Did you ever see the children playing at Neverland during that time period? Yes. And what did you see them doing? They used the motorcycles, the skateboards. There are bikes, bikes that they use around the house. Would you see Janet Arvizo with her children when they were playing? No. And in your work, do you go all over the property? Yes. Did you see the children at other locations on the property? At the theater. And what did you see them doing at the theater? Well, when there are films, they would watch the films, or they would spend time at the counter eating ice cream. Now, is that the counter in the theater? Yes. And is there a place to sit there? There is no sitting area. Do you sort of lean against the counter and order what you want? Yes, or they could serve themselves. Okay, and that's where you get ice cream and popcorn, right? Yes. And you can get candy there as well? Yes. And you would see them when you were cleaning the theater? Yes. Did you ever see the children, Star, Gavin, Develin, interacting with other guests at the ranch? Yes. And what do you mean by that? Well, at that time I was trying to recall who was there at that particular time. No. You don't recall seeing the Arvizo children playing with other children at Neverland? At that time, I cannot recall. Do you recall seeing the children in the area where the rides are, the amusement rides? We don't go. Usually don't go out to that area. Okay. Now, you said that in the main house, you used to clean the wine cellar area, right? Yes. And what did you use to do there as part of your work? That is not in the area that is usually cleaned. It's cleaned once in a while. It is not a place that is frequented.
It's a place that is always locked and we really don't say we usually cleaned it. Only when it needed it. And who would decide when the wine cellar area needed cleaning? At that time I would, or Jesus. And when you say clean the wine cellar area, what are you talking about? Please describe the, that part of Neverland. That place is used to store meals or food that the cooks use, for example, if they buy big amounts. There are some refrigerators that they use. And there's a sink right next to that, and if they leave things out, sometimes they make a mess right there. And, or maybe they have a drink there and then someone just leaves the glass behind. But really, it's not that much that's something that we would have to clean all the time. And where would the food be stored in the wine cellar area? Where the refrigerators are. Would the food be actually in the area where you find wine? Yes. And that's an area that's refrigerated, right? Yes. So would the cooks go into the wine cellar to get food from time to time? Yes. Do you know how often they would do that? Not very often. And what kind of food was stored in the wine cellar during the period of, say, January, February, March of 2003? They used refrigerators when they buy meats, juices or extra milk. Those refrigerators are used as storage. So the wine cellar itself is refrigerated, right? Yes. And it gets very cold in there, right? Yes. Now, when you would go in there to clean, how would you get in? There is a key that we had to go in there. And where would you get the key? The key, Jesus had the key, or Joe. And who would decide when you needed to go clean the wine cellar area? Well, if someone that had gone in there became aware. But we did not go. Would you clean that area if it needed cleaning? Yes. And typically would you decide when to go there or would someone tell you it needed cleaning? Usually, well, since the key was held by only two people, we had to request the key. Okay, do you recall the key hanging anywhere in that area? They had it on a keychain. Okay, but when you needed the key, did you get the key yourself or did someone give it to you? Someone would give it to me. Okay, did you need permission to go into that area or would you just go there when you thought it was necessary? I would have to ask. Now, when food was being prepared for a large number of guests at Neverland, would there be a lot of activity in and out of the wine cellar area? Yes. And would you see cooks, for example, going in and out of the wine cellar area? Yes. Usually they were the ones who would have the key. If there was an event, they would have the key with them during the day in order to go in and out. Was it only the cooks you would see going in and out, or would you see other people? Just the cooks. And was it your understanding that any time the cooks needed to go into the wine cellar, they could get in? Yes, but they would also have to request the key. In the kitchen area, you also have refrigerated areas, right? Yes. And they're not locked, right? No. And there is alcohol. Excuse me. Alcoholic beverages are contained in those areas as well, right? Yes. And anybody can open the refrigerator and get those alcoholic beverages, right? Yes. And those refrigerated areas have see-through glass, right? Yes. You can see what's in that refrigerated area before you open it to get something? Yes. And you can see things like beer and wine in that area, right? Yes. Okay. Do you recall a keychain to the wine cellar hanging on a wall in the maid's room? Well, before, a long time before, that key was used. Okay, now, after a large number of guests would be served dinner, would it be normal for you to have to clean in the wine cellar area? No. So you just did it when somebody requested it pretty much? Yes. Would you clean, excuse me, let me rephrase that, when you would clean in the wine cellar area? Would you also clean the area that's next to the wine cellar? What area? The area that's right up to the wine cellar door. The arcade? Yes. Yes. Did you clean that area as well? We would clean the counter. And the bathrooms. Okay. Do you remember ever seeing any of the Arviso children in the wine cellar area? No. Do you remember ever seeing Janet Arviso in the wine cellar area? No. Do you remember ever seeing Gavin Arviso drinking any alcoholic beverage? I never saw. 
Do you remember ever seeing Gavin Arvizo look like he was intoxicated? No. Do you remember ever seeing Star Arvizo drinking any alcoholic beverage? I never saw. Do you remember ever seeing Star Arvizo look like he was intoxicated? No. Do you remember ever seeing Develin Arvizo drinking an alcoholic beverage? No. And do you remember ever seeing Develin Arvizo look like she was intoxicated? No. Did you ever see Michael Jackson with any of the Arvizo children drinking alcohol? No. Do you recall Janet Arvizo ever complaining about Michael Jackson? No. Do you recall Janet Arvizo ever saying nice things about Michael Jackson? Yes. And what did she say? Object. Hearsay. Not for the truth. The objections overruled. That he was like a father. And when did you? Excuse me, let me rephrase that. When do you recall hearing Janet Arvizo say that? At that time. And did she start the conversation with you? Yes. And where did this conversation take place, if you remember? I was in Gavin's room, Unit 3. I was doing the room, and she came in to either find him or get something from the room. And she began to speak to say that Michael Jackson was like a father to her children, and that she wanted them to call him, Dad. How long did that conversation last? Oh, it was just a short while. Did Janet Arvizo ever talk to you about her son's illness? Yes. And what did she say? Well, even though she spoke Spanish, she mentioned her child, her son's illness. On that occasion, she mentioned the illness and how he was improving. But she was speaking in English, so I couldn't really understand her exactly, what she was saying about the illness that her son had. Did Janet Arvizo ever say that Michael Jackson had helped her son with his illness? Objection. Leading. Sustained. Did Janet Arvizo ever mention Michael Jackson when she was telling you about her son's illness? How is that? Well, did she ever say anything about Michael Jackson helping her family with the son's illness? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, that he had been a blessing to them, and that he was the type of person, he was like a father to her children. Did you ever hear Janet Arvizo complain about Michael Jackson at any time? No. Did Janet Arvizo ever tell you she was being held against her will at Neverland? After that conversation, about a week later, she began to talk about being there against her will. And what did she say? That we should help her leave. Did she ever mention someone named Dieter Weisner? On that occasion she said that three persons, including that person Dieter, they were holding her there. And did she say anything about their interfering with her relationship with Michael Jackson? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. That they were interfering with her relationship with him, yes. And approximately when did she say that Dieter Weisner and others were interfering with her relationship with Michael Jackson? That happened almost at the time that they left. Did she ever mention someone named Frank Cassio? Yes. And did she say he was interfering with Janet's relationship with Michael Jackson? Yes. Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. The answer's yes. Next question. Did she ever mention a Vinny Amen? I'm sorry, what was that? Did she ever mention someone named Vinny Amen? Oh, Vinny, yes. Did she complain about him as well? Yes. Did she say anything about whether he was interfering with her friendship with Michael Jackson? Yes. Okay, now, you've mentioned Frank, Vinny and Dieter. Did she say anyone else was interfering with her friendship with Michael Jackson that you recall? No, just those three persons. Okay, at some point, do you recall Janet asking Jesus to take her home? Yes. And were you with Janet and Jesus when you heard that? Yes. And where were you? In that, on that occasion we were in Unit 4. Was Jesus there as well? Yes. And did Janet say she wanted to leave Neverland? Yes. And to your knowledge, did Jesus agree to arrange to let her leave? Not at that moment when I was there. Did he do it at some point? I believe so. And did he tell her he would arrange to have Frank or Vinnie take her home? 
Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. She wanted, well, she did say that they were interfering. And to your knowledge, was she taken home at some point? I don't know. Okay. Do you recall Janet telling you and Jesus that Frank and Vinny were separating her from Michael Jackson? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. If I may take just one moment, Your Honor. Yes. Do you recall, excuse me, Mrs. Gomez, do you recall seeing any adult magazines at Neverland? Yes, on one occasion. And do you recall seeing any of those magazines with the Arviso children? Well, I'm pretty sure, yes, because in Unit 2 there was a backpack with those type of magazines. And who was staying in Unit 2? Develin and Star. And what did you do when you saw those magazines in Unit 2? I left them there. Did you tell anyone about that? No. Did you find them when you were cleaning? Yes, but I just saw them. Okay, and you saw them in a backpack? Yes. Okay, do you know who owned the backpack? Well, I would suppose it was Stars. Okay, do you remember seeing, was the backpack open? Yes. And do you recall seeing these magazines wrapped in a shirt? Objection. Leading. Sustained. When you saw the magazines in the backpack, were they in full view? The backpack was slightly open, and I saw those magazines. Did they appear to be wrapped inside of something? No, that was another occasion. That was in his office. Objection. Non-responsive. How do you know? Laughter. I took a guess. I have to hear what she says. I don't. There were two magazines in the lower cabinet under the sink. And this was in the office area? Yes, in the office. Okay. Did you ever see adult magazines just laying around in the main house? No. No further questions. Cross-examine? Good morning, Ms. Gomez. Good morning. You have never cleaned Mr. Jackson's room, did you? No. In fact, over your nine years, you were only allowed in Mr. Jackson's room three times, isn't that true? Yes, sometimes. And is that because Mr. Jackson only allowed certain people in his room to clean it? Yes. As far as adult magazines go, there would be no place for children to get adult magazines at Neverland unless some adult gave them to them, isn't that true? Objection. Foundation. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. I don't know. Well, you said there's no magazines lying around. So for those kids to get adult magazines, someone would have to give them to them, right? Objection. No foundation. Overruled. I don't know. As far as, and you did testify that you have seen adult magazines in Mr. Jackson's office, is that correct? Yes. And you've seen adult magazines in a bathroom? Is that another area? No, no, no. In the office, underneath the sink, I saw two magazines. And then in the children's room, Develin and Star. Okay, and that would be Mr. Jackson's office, the bathroom near Mr. Jackson's office, is that correct, where you saw those magazines? Yes. Now, you've been an employee of Neverland for nine years straight, is that correct? Yes. And you value your job there? Of course. Did you sign a confidentiality agreement when you went to work at Neverland not to discuss things off of when you leave the property? Yes. And did you know that your phone calls can be monitored at Neverland? Objection. Foundation. Misstates the evidence. Overruled. You may answer. I had an idea that they were, that the calls would be checked, yes. And do most employees of Mr. Jackson know that their phone calls can be monitored when they're at Neverland? Objection. Calls for speculation. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Now, when you were interviewed at Neverland on November 18th, the day of the search warrant, do you remember that day? Yes. You told the officer that the Arviso children were polite and normal, true? I said that, but I felt intimidated that day. Okay, and you said that the Arviso children would make quite a mess in their room, isn't that correct? Yes. And they'd eat a lot of candy? Yes. 
Isn't it fair to say that most children who come and visit at Neverland eat a lot of candy? But those children, they were even more special. They ate more than was normal. But most of the children at Neverland eat all the candy they want. Isn't that right? Yes. And do they act like children? The children that eat candy, do they act differently? Do they act like they're full of sugar? Objection. Vague. Maybe I'll ask the question a little differently. Ask for foundation. Have you ever noticed how children act when they've been eating a lot of sugar? Yes, but those children would get a lot of candy. Object is non responsive. Objection. He's cutting off the witness. The objection is overruled. I'll strike the second part of the answer. The answer is yes. Okay. You said that their rooms would be messy, the Arviso children's rooms would be messy? Yes. The sheets would be off the bed, and the Arviso children would play in those rooms during the daytime, wouldn't they? They came and went, I would assume. Because you didn't stay there at night after, say, nine o'clock, did you? Not in the rooms. Yes. And didn't you say you normally left Neverland around 9 p.m.? Yes, nine o'clock or ten o'clock. Okay, so you don't know where children would sleep at Neverland after that time, do you? I would assume in their rooms. I don't know. But without assuming, you don't really know, do you? No, I don't know. Now, when you heard this remark about Frank and Dieter and Vinny trying to interfere with Miss Arviso's family and Mr. Jackson, was that conversation in English or in Spanish? In English. And Miss Arviso told you she liked Michael Jackson, true? Yes. Did you ever hear any of the children refer to Michael Jackson as daddy or dad when Michael Jackson was there? Any of the Arviso children? I did not hear that. Who were Vinny? Who was Vinny? Let's start with him. Do you know who Vinny is? Well, I only knew that he was Frank's friend. And who is Frank? A friend of Mr. Mr. Jackson. Now, when the Arviso children were there in February and March, they were there for almost a month. Isn't that true? Yes. Do you know why they were taken out of school to stay at Neverland for that period of time? Objection. Assumes facts not in evidence. No. Overruled. The answer is, no. Next question. And you also stated that Janet stayed in her room most of the time in February and March, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. No further questions. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Let's start our break early.